in this video, we're getting creative. We're going to turn this daytime shot convincingly into a nightscape using Luminar 4. What's up, friends? My name is Pi. We are teaming up with Skylum to bring you a series of Luminar tutorials. This is one of them. So go ahead and download the exercise file following the link in the description of this video. You'll get this little image here. Now this shot, relax, was not taken on train tracks. This was at a retired like depot where you can kind of like go and explore and take pictures and whatnot. So I thought it'd be fun to transform this however we possibly can using Luminar. Now, the first thing that I want to do is think about kind of where I want to go with this. And I want this to be like a shot. Like if you imagine shooting through these two trains and you're kind of revealing the Milky Way behind. I know, I know it's, it's, it's kind of wild. Let's just, let's just do it. So the first thing that I want to do is jump over into the creative palette. Okay. So from here, I'm just going to go ahead and select the sky that I actually want. Now, if I wanted, I could, you know, choose blue skies, but that's, that's just too boring. You know, I don't want blue skies. I don't want drama. I want the galaxy. Yeah. Okay. Or let's see, there's starry night one, there's starry night two. Let's just kind of flip through here and see what we like. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I want the one that's like over the top ridiculous. I want the Milky Way. That's the one that I want. So at this point, it obviously doesn't look very convincing because we still have this daylight lighting over here. So what we're going to do is bounce back and forth between the essentials and the creative palette as we kind of mix and match our way into goodness. Let's do this. So I'm going to go back to essentials. Now from here, what I'm going to do is pull the exposure down quite a bit. Okay. Pulling the exposure down to some place where it would kind of look if this were an actual nightscape. And then from here, I'm going to start lifting the shadows a bit. All right. So even with just this small adjustment, we're at a much better place already. Now I'm going to go back to the creative palette. And what we're going to do is kind of relight the entire scene as if, well, the Milky Way was kind of our primary light source here. Okay. So now we're getting this place where it's looking already that much more convincing, but what we've got to do is start balancing things out, right? The blacks are too deep. So we're going to go ahead and lift the blacks a little bit. We probably should get a little bit more whites in there. And let's see a little bit more highlights in there. Kind of like as if the, uh, as if the entire scene were, were lit by some sort of moonlight, right? And I'm just going to bring the balance of the exposure up a little bit and we'll kind of get a little bit more contrast in the image. And we're starting to arrive at like a, a very nice balance. So this is where I would start looking towards temperature. What do I want to do with my temperature? Do I want to start cooling this or keeping it more on the warm side? And I think I want to end up with somewhere sort of in between. I want to start cooling, but not go too far. So probably about right here, we can start seeing the blues kind of highlight against the, uh, you know, train, train, cart, cart, cars, carts. Well, you know, you know that word, that word. So now I'm going to start horizon blending a little bit. I'm going to extend the horizon line up and then we're going to place the horizon position just a little bit more behind the mountain. So it kind of fades down and into the mountains. Okay. And then what we're going to start doing now is start looking towards this little dehaze option. So I'm going to start to kind of subtly fade out the sky just a little bit to kind of give us a little bit more of a overall subtler, subtler. Yeah, that's a word. You know, it is. I just made it up. Okay. Image here. I just want a subtle, more subtle effect. I don't know why I keep wanting to say subtler. Okay. With the temperature, we're going to tweak the sky temperature a little bit. Again, going for a little bit on the cooler side. I think this is fun. We're starting to get this kind of matching tone and sky exposure. I'm going to pull it down a little bit so it's not super bright. So up here, it's like a little bit too bright. I want to bring it down just a little bit now already. Yeah, already. If we were to post this on Instagram, nobody would be the wiser. Okay. But let's go ahead and see if we can close the gaps a little bit to get to a little blend, a, a better blend in that line that's going across. So these like little power lines, we can either try to remove them entirely with this blend, or we could try to leave them entirely with the blend. So I'm going to go ahead and see if we take this off, let's go to close gaps here. And let's see if we tweak. Yeah, it looks like what we probably need to aim for is to leave them in. Okay, so what we're going to do is just go to close gaps and bring that up a little bit higher. So that way it's not 
clearly see those lines kind of dropping through. There we go, that's getting better. Very cool. Okay, so here is where I might go back to just my, my temperature and kind of my base exposure settings and make sure that I'm happy and good with everything, right? So I'm just gonna kind of bring the overall exposure up maybe a little bit, kind of play around a little bit, get to a good spot, happy, healthy medium right there. And if we wanna start kind of making adjustments to the overall image, what we could do is add a new layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the layers and go new adjustment layer. And I could say, this is global, no, not, not, yeah, whatever that was, adjustments. And from here, any changes and adjustments I make basically are gonna be applied to both of these layers now, okay? So I can kind of apply this, just remove uh, or reduce a little bit of the brightness, add in a little bit more contrast, make it a little bit more convincing of an effect, okay? We can even start getting down into the color. And this is fun, because we can start tweaking the color saturation to start pulling out certain color tones while emphasizing others. So let's say, let's see here. Okay, I like the uh, the yellows and the, the reds and everything like that, but let's, let's do a little bit of playing around here and see if we want to shift some of these hues. Okay, I don't like it on the green side, but I do kind of like the idea of pulling the reds just a little bit, or potentially even moving the yellows a little bit. Yeah, I like going for this kind of slightly more deep red, going to this side a little bit, and maybe pulling a little bit of the red saturation out as if this were nighttime, we might have a little bit less saturation in these oranges and reds and, and everything. So I'm just gonna pull out a little bit of those tones. And in doing so, I'm gonna kind of make the blues pop a little bit. So I'm gonna go up to the blues and kind of make the blue saturation a little bit more poppy. I might shift the tone so it kind of has a little bit of a, a teal tone to it. Shift the teals a little bit towards the blues and just kind of play with this to get to a this kind of unique sort of nightscape sort of look. I'm gonna pull down the blue tones as well, the uh, blue luminance values. Okay, so I think this is a pretty convincing job at this point. We've done kind of this mixture between essentials as well as the creative palette. Now let's take a look at the before and after. So if I grab this little button right here, I can actually slide and look at this. We have gone from a daytime image to a very convincing nightscape in just a matter of moments playing around with Luminar. That's pretty fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, I'd love for you all to subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy the tutorials, be sure to turn on the little notifications button, that little bell turned on so you're actually notified when we upload new videos. Also, comment below because I get a lot of my ideas for future topics from your comments. So comment, I actually check them out and we will build those into future education and future tutorials that we bring to the channel. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.